uh, and promos and things like that. So he's he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of creativity for it. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to he wants to develop and make films, cool. uh, shorts, that kind of thing. Yes, sir, Judah. Full screens up. All right, full screens up. Let's leave that for thirty seconds. Um, guys, we are excited to welcome Joe Thomas to the show. We're going to be on him. here. Joe I Thomas is the man. <laughs> I listen to all four hours. Of, even my wife doesn't listen to all four hours of my show. That's good. That's good. Um, so, Judy, you're going to give me the countdown when you take down the full screen. I'm going to leave this here so you can see it too, Joe. Oh, no, that's distracting. Is it the distracting show. I love me some me. Okay. okay. <laughs> Guys, what's up? It's Jerry Miller. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's great to be with you on a chilly, chilly Wednesday here in Charlottesville, Virginia. A lot to cover on the program. Joe Thomas, who is the program director of WCHV, the host of the Joe Thomas show, he's going to join us here in a matter of moments. Of course, the I Love Seville show, thanks to the fine folks at Greenberry's Coffee. For more than 25 years, Sean and Roxanne Simmons and Greenberry's Coffee Company have been supporting Charlottesville and Central Virginia with the best coffee out there. Greenberry's Coffee, guys, is Charlottesville's longest running coffee providers. And uh, one of the oldest sponsors of the Joe Thomas in the Morning Voice. When we had no sponsors whatsoever, uh, Sean called us and we went up for a meeting, met them, and they talked about it, and uh, they jumped on really early on. I don't know if there'd still be a Joe Thomas in the Morning radio show if it wasn't for Greenberry. There you so. go. This man is Joe Thomas. You know him the Joe Thomas Show, the program director at WCHV. A lot we want to cover. Um, oh, and I yeah. think we get right into it here. And We you have know, three hours. Right? We, we yes, do. Yes. We have as much as we want. <laughs> Fortunately, with what we're doing here, there is yeah. no time capacity. Oh, you, you don't I, have to hit a network feed? No. Or, I yeah. talked with Ray Cadell for like 90 minutes. And when oh. he was done, he's like, that felt like nine minutes. You know when you get into the radio thing, did you, you look at the clock and then you're like, oh my God, that was an hour. Did you at least get him to play some horn? I No, I did not get oh, him to play some horn. He's man. so talented. Oh, Ray Cadell and the Cool Cats, thank you for joining us yesterday. Joe Thomas, guys, we're going to get straight to it. This guy has his pulse on the news cycle here. Let's start, let's start with Nolan Stout's article in the Daily Progress. Okay. Nolan um, depicted the credit card usage for city council over a 15 to 16 month period of time. We'll outline it quickly and then get his mm -hmm. analysis. Wes Bellamy led the credit card purchases. He spent the most amount of money. Of the councilors. Of the councilors, yeah. Mayor Walker was in the two slot right there. Two purchases are getting more attention than others. Well, a couple of them are. One of them is Wes's purchase at Hooters for a lunch meal. <laughs> um, a second one is Mayor Walker's Ragged Mountain running shoes purchase to run a race. Yeah. And then um, some other ones that I don't think really needed some attention was Signer's um, After Midnight, which turned out to be not After Midnight, you know, transportation purchases at South by, South by Southwest mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. Well, you know, here's the thing. If you read the code, and, and I understand a lot of people would be like, oh, heck. But, you know, anyone who's part of a company knows that if you have uh, an expense account or you're trying to do some petty cash, uh, going on a business trip, man, you have got to go through a grilling process to justify it. I can think of, you know, our business manager at the radio station. Gail? Oh, and love Gail. I, I love her, but, yeah. you know, I don't want to try to sneak something no. past her. She's good. You know, if I tried to s sell lunch at Hooters, she'd be like, uh-uh, I am not buying that. Uh, but, but, you know, like, even at least Mayor Walker's purchase of the running shoes was for a race, a charity race that the city was promoting. Okay. So, if you read the code, which Noah put is a PDF, if sure. you get the yeah. down online version of the yeah. story, it in all capital letters, which any kid on the internet knows means you're yelling. <laughs> um, so in all capitals, it says this card is for city purchases and any travel regarding public purpose, the, the citizens. And... I, I don't see how any of this is justified. So more than the city councilors, you know, Jason Vandiver and the, the, the accountants at the city need to be held into account as to not being like uh, the business manager saying, this isn't, come on, you can't justify this. So stuff. you don't think, Joe, okay, so I run a business. When, when my guys or myself go on the road, I understand that I have to reimburse them for their time, for their effort, for hotels, for rental cars, for per diem. Mm -hmm. You don't think that counselors can go to another municipality, learn from counselors at another municipality about the good, the bad, and the ugly that's happening there, and then take the good, bad, and ugly and apply it to Charlottesville to make our municipality better? They're supposed to rep represent us, and I know that sounds harsh to say it, um, but when you need the Dave Matthews Band to raise $5 million to fix 
the public housing, uh, uh, I call them hospices because uh, I'll explain why in a minute. But when you need Dave Matthews to contribute $5 million to fix Crescent Hall, right. where, Wes, you kicked your campaign off, there's something wrong with this. So you're, you're basically you're, you're, saying the money should have been better spent at Crescent Halls than reimbursing the counselors when they're going on a business trip to Georgia. Jerry, you, you, have you ever read the Orange Dot Project? Report? I have not. Okay, it's it's a little, you know, it's a, it's dry. Okay. But Ridge Schuyler uh, did an amazing job at the, the behest of the city council. Now he's working with PVCC and Frank Squalachi. All these guys have got this network to work program. You should really get, well, Frank is crazy, but uh, it, you, you should talk to these folks because they're doing great work at trying to connect people to jobs. Uh -huh. But the first thing Ridge did was he figured out how much does it cost to live in Charlottesville and how many people can actually afford that. And one of the things he discovered was that 25% of the population cannot find a job in Charlottesville that pays them enough to live in Charlottesville. Now, it, part of his research said the average rent somewhere in between the eight to nine for a small place to 11, you know, so you're talking about a good bit of somebody's salary for that. Think about five counselors, $5,000 each. You guys could be paying a lot of people's rent while they're talking about affordable housing. So, you know, I know it's apples to apples. You can play a counting game. But when you're talking about $5,000 a month, a, a, and you're talking about people who can't make an $800 a month rent, and you're sitting there pontificating on affordable housing, I'm sorry, I've got to call the lie out of that. Uh, it, it, and, and it's sadly typically politician-ish. Of course. Um, and, and you want Charlottesville to be represented by better. And I think you know 2019 is going to be a year where Please, <laughs> please, as God is my witness, we need people to run for city council. There are three seats on Charlottesville City Council up for election. Right. Uh, Mike Signers, Wes Bellamy's, Kathy Galvin's, all four-year terms. You can make a substantial change to the economic landscape. And the reason I call these places hospices uh -huh. is because a lot of people, unfortunately, and a lot of elected officials treat poverty like it's a chronic <laughs> disease. As if, I'm sorry, Jerry, you have poverty. Sorry, we're going to make you comfortable for a while. And it's wrong. Poverty is imminently curable. And, and what Ridge and Frank Squalachi and these folks at Network to Work at PVCC are doing are just the tip of the iceberg of things that could be done to create a better economic opportunity in Charlottesville other than, gee, I wonder if a new convenience store is going to open and if they'll pay more than the one I'm working at now, which is why 25% of the population struggles to make the rent. Joe Thomas, our guest, guys, the host of the Joe Thomas Show on WCHV. Um, this show, thanks to Greenberry's Coffee. You know, it's interesting that the itemized report of credit card usage with council came right on the heels, right in the same breath that Mayor Walker is trying to raise the salaries for council. And I want to thank some folks for joining. Karen Straley, Quinton Johnson, Greg Dion, Bobby Castine, John Crawford, Wait, Raven Williams, Fisher, April Dent Ward. We have a live hopping feed right now. Thank awesome. you for joining us. Thank you. This is the question I have for you. Um, Mayor Walker, um, Councilman Bellamy, even uh, Councilwoman Galvin, right. have indicated that this can be a 30, 40, 50, 60 hour a week job, depending on how much effort you want to put into it. And they have said, if you want to do this job right, you got to work at a full time job. They then counter and say that the pay is $18,000 for four of them. It's $20,000 for the mayor spot for Mayor Walker. Mm -hmm. That is that much money. So are we expecting, the question I have for you, are we expecting that these council folks have to work 30, 40, 50 hours a week to do their job correctly, and then we're going to compensate them to the tune of eighteen dollars to $20,000 a year, and then we're not going to reimburse them for expenses? Well, that seems off, unfair. First off, you know, and there have been some very esteemable Kevin Lynch, David Norris, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Holly Edwards, who all were able to do the job without it being a full-time job. Uh, to them and have enough time for their outside employment. But can I counter? Can I just, I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, I feel like today's climate in Charlottesville in 2018 and 2019 is a different climate than when Dave Norris, and I love Dave Norris. Mm -hmm. I think Dave Norris is one of our last great mayors. 
He was There's fantastic. still a Facebook page that's Norris Thomas will work for jobs. Dave so. Norris did a great job. Okay, where I'm going with this is the climate today, 2018, 2019, post A12, is very different than when Dave Norris was in office. I, I, I would counter that by saying only because there are folks who want it to be. I don't think the climate is different. I don't think the poverty issues in Charlottesville are different. I don't think the infrastructural issues in Charlottesville are different. As a matter of fact, I think they're worse now they're, than they were on Marx Brothers weekend. Uh, so you know, they can say that it's a harder job. I don't buy it. I, I think Jefferson laid out the idea of citizen representatives. You take some time, you volunteer, you go do the job. I'd love to see U.S. House of Representatives decentralized. Send them back to their district offices. Make Denver Riggleman or Abigail Spanberger spend you know five days a week in their office and go up to D.C. for two days a week. Because nowadays, with the internet, with the ability to communicate, uh, there's no reason you need to have these folks you know, right there on K Street where they're easy pickings for the lobbyists. I think that's an excuse that people are making to say, hmm, how can I make it seem like my job is harder than, than it should be? And, and I think there's a subtext, and I don't know if they're intentionally trying to make it seem like, oh, you don't want to run for city council. We don't pay you a lot, and it's a really hard job. I don't think that's the case. Yeah, so you yeah. think, you think, and guys, jump in the live stream. David Caron, thank you for the question. He says, the position we're in, Joe, is, is caused by city council. And if you guys have a topic or a question you want to ask Joe or myself, join us on the live stream and ask. I, I do not think that Wes and Mayor Walker and the council members are painting a picture or painting or building a brand that council is hard, it's arduous, underpaid, as a result, don't run against us so we can stay in our seats. No, but I think they're painting that picture because things haven't gotten better. And I, and I think that for you know, their, their position, uh -huh. they need to tell a story to the people in Crescent Hall, the Mary Carries of the world, who are saying, hey, I've been voting for you guys since 1965. When's it gonna start getting better? This is why um, Don Gathers, mm -hmm poignant point after the Democratic caucus in Charlottesville, uh, 400 people attended, 12 voting black members of the Democratic Party. I'm not saying the Republican Party held a primary and only 12 black community members showed up. Democratic Tw Party. Democratic Party caucus, only 12 participants. Concerning. <laughs> Concerning to the Democratic Party because what's happening, and Mayor Walker is a template of it, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, people who are poor are starting to say, hold on, I've heard this before, and finally people are starting to take it up. Now, on the conservative side, our fault has been we have been ceding the black community to the far left by saying, all right, well, you know, don't go in there, don't campaign in there because you're never gonna win. The, the problem is now the black community has realized, hold it, you've been telling us since 1965 that if we vote for you, things are gonna get better. It hasn't gotten better, uh, so now we're gonna go find somebody else. And they're not looking to conservative free market solutions, and, I, and I'm not saying Republican, mm -hmm. believe me, mm -hmm. there's enough <laughs> problems there. I'm sure. just saying, you know, Open up the marketplace. Let's get more jobs in Charlottesville. Let's look at some of the places where people could be work looking. Let's look at some of the reasons the black community, the poor community, are stuck in a cycle of poverty. Uh, it, there's a great group called Right on Crime, uh -huh. uh, led by some great d Democrats and Republicans, both, uh, who are saying there's a problem in our criminal justice system, over-criminalization, uh, punishing people for just doing something we don't like rather than something we should be scared of, look them up, right on crime. Uh, so there's, there's reasons people come out of a job. One of the things Ridge Schuyler discovered in his work is that uh, through the testimony of one of the uh, temp service groups here in town, that a huge portion of people who want to work in some of these good paying jobs won't pass security muster because of a drug arrest. Yeah, 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 you're saying a drug background drug check. Arrest. Background yeah. checks won't pass them, and even plumbers, you know, you're going to wind up going on some federally secured property, so you're not going to hire a, 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 a minion that is 
is not going to pass that security test. So we've got to figure out a way to get back to a place where we're not creating an entire population of people who, because of a mistake, and I, I'm not saying we should legalize drugs or anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we need to do a better job of explaining to kids that these behaviors are going to disqualify them from a lot of work, but we also have to look at what are we creating? Are we creating a permanent underclass just to benefit political leadership, and that's why I think it's concerning when Don pointed out how few members of the black community were participating in the Democratic Party anymore, and what we should be doing is talking about you know, getting, getting families back together, getting more job opportunities in communities, not forcing people to do things, but saying, hey, there's more choices, because when you have choices, sure, you have options. You know, you know the, the salaries go up, right, 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 and and the prices go down. So the more competitive marketplace. I mean, it's what you do here. You're sure. out there loving Seaville. Yeah. Uh, you know, a business in Charlottesville needs to compete with one another. Uh, the more HVAC mechanics there are, so the more they have to pay their team because you might leave to go to the other guy. Uh, the more plumbing companies, the more electricians, K-Tech, these kind of places, we need to be looking at those answers rather than just saying, oh, maybe Dave Matthews Band will hold another concert and he'll fix up the other Give us uh, another $5 projects. million. Dollars. Yeah. Give us another okay. five mil. Uh, let's see. Jim Hamlet, welcome to the show. Tyler Berry, Suzanne Harris, Harold Martin, thank you for joining us here on the I Love Seville show. I think Wes um, is trying to do that. Okay, and where I'm going with this, he's launched a nonprofit, um, the We Code Two. It's an organization mm -hmm. that is trying to rehabil rehabilitate folks that were incarcerated by teaching them digital skills like coding and digital marketing and digital resume building and, and frankly, basic keyboard processing, mm -hmm. like how to use the keyboard, like Microsoft Word. And you know, I think sometimes we take for granted that we know how to do. Well, but but there's there's also the the sidebar, which is saying, you know, that's all well and good. There are groups, computers for kids, that are out there in the elementary schools that are already doing this kind of work. What I, I desperately want to get away from the idea that Kathy Galvin or Mike Signer or Wes Bellamy or Ralph Northam is going to be the answer or Donald Trump. It doesn't make a difference. They're not the people we should be looking for to the answers. It was what uh, Bush the first talked about in his thousand points of light inaugural address is, you know, we need to be the answers because the government is never it's not constructed to do a good job of fixing. But it. how do you counter the point? And Elliot Harding, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining Easy us here on the Elliot all right. Show. Elliot Harding, we have respect and props for you on the show. How do you counter generations? Play some devil's advocate with you. Sure. How do you counter generations of systematic racism? How do you counter the 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 gentrification or the destruction of the Vinegar Vinegar Hill neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Um, the homes owned by African Americans in this community, homes are without question for, I'd say, 95% mm -hmm. of people, their number one investment. Mm -hmm. The loss of homes, the loss of businesses, the loss of confidence, the loss of morale, the loss of community. I mean, let's be honest. When you do stuff like that, you're going to impact people negatively. <laughs> All right. There's two parts to what okay. you're saying. Uh, first off, I help lead a campaign and property rights, property rights protections are what you would call a core conservative principle if we're gonna throw labels around. And when the property rights constitutional amendment came up for election, the Democratic Party of Charlottesville actively campaigned against it, even despite that. And I was there, I was working the polls, talking to people, and I was surrounded by people with Obama-Biden uh, t-shirts on because I, all I had to do was say, listen, would you want your home taken from you for no good reason? And they said, hell no. Right. I said, well, then you need to vote for this. So even despite the active campaigning against it of the Democratic Party of Charlottesville, the city of Charlottesville voters voted 60-40 in favor of property rights. That's why I know Charlottesville is more conservative thinking if you break it out issue by issue. If you, stop, it if you stop making it about you know, window dressing like race, right, right, right. racism. I mean, I could go down the list of who, who were the government officials that did Vinegar Hill? Who actually wrote most of Virginia's Jim Crow laws? We've got people protesting on, on Monument Avenue in Richmond, Robert E. Lee, when 
five blocks, six blocks away out in front of the Virginia Capitol is a statue to Harry Byrd, right. who was the state senator that wrote most of our Virginia laws. That's just because people don't know who he is. But, <laughs> but, but he's out there right. with his hand out like this, and he's the guy that was actually doing the Vinegar Hills, doing the original resistance in Charlottesville where they closed all the Charlottesville schools instead of integrating them. So, you know, there are people who believe in separating us. Let's stop allowing them to. Racism is a really big accusation. What you're saying, if there is racism in Charlottesville, then somebody needs to go to jail for it. You don't think, there's, ra you don't think there's racism in Charlottesville? I think there's racism because people want to divide us and they're saying, okay, he doesn't like you because you're different color than he is. I don't think there's nearly the kind of racism that is promoted in Charlottesville. So you think it's a manipulation and exploitation yeah. to help a political career? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what infuriates me more than anything else because what winds up happening, and we saw it on Marx Brothers weekend, which is what I refer to August 11th and 12th, uh, for and, I, and if you want explanations, tweet Jerry through the Facebook feed. Yeah, join us. There's a lot of people uh, on the feed right now. What was done there were people, and I refer to the, you know, the David Duke and the, the progressive marionettes were out there doing little street theater to divide us for political purposes, for political gain. Uh, when when uh, Ralph Northam's campaign runs a campaign, Ed Gillespie is the most singularly milk toasty person. I like him, he's a good man, so is Ralph Northam. Right. Ralph Northam is a good man too, but both of them were pretty much you know, outside of party affiliations, very close ideologically. So you needed to create some idea that there was a racial con con uh, connotation in Ed Gillespie's campaign. So all of a sudden the imagery of Charlottesville becomes central in Ralph Northam's campaign. Oh, he didn't run the ads, somebody ran them for him. Ed Gillespie's driving around chasing little brown skin kids in a pickup truck. Uh, it's, it's, it's insidious because all it's doing is helping people gain position. West Bellamy, uh, right, right after the Bella's restaurant. Do they know about yeah, Bella's yeah. restaurant? So, so Bella's restaurant. Douglas Muir, um, Douglas Muir, who is Lecturer, friend of the show. Yeah. He's a friend of the show. We've done work for him. He's a adjunct fa was adjunct faculty at the University mm -hmm. of Virginia. He made an insensitive comment on Facebook. Well, he about, made a, he made, he a, made a, a stupid comment. He made he made he an observation about the behavior of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, he we made a comment about talk. Black Lives Matter, and then Wes Bellamy organized a petition out front of Bella's restaurant on West Main petitioning this restaurant, and I had a problem with that. Why I had a problem with that is our city council should not be damaging mm -hmm. or negatively impacting entrepreneurs and small business owners that are in turn paying tax revenue to the city of Charlottesville. That, that was, was BS. Very last time Wes was on my show. Uh -huh. He does not and come on anymore? I haven't asked him. Okay. I just don't okay. feel like giving him the time. Um, you know, He's welcome to, nobody's stopping him from calling. I'm gonna welcome but, on the show here. The but show. I, I said to Wes, and Wes wouldn't come into the studio, so I had to go to him. And I went to a barbershop he frequents, and we went and we did. His Image Barbershop. It's a yes, great yeah. one. Yeah, and yeah. they're great guys who owned it, yeah. actually. Bear. <laughs> Bear's a good guy. I actually turned a few of them on, Wes, a little bit after a while because they thought I was going to come in and be intimidated. Um, and I wasn't, but I said, Wes, you campaigned on simple stuff like stopping the stop and frisk legislation. When does that happen? You know, there's a, there's a part of every city council meeting where councilors can bring up matters not on the agenda. All Wes had to do was say, hey, I've got a thing that I want to get onto the agenda next I understand week. That. And he never did. He's never done it. Three years, he hasn't done it. Well, you can make the same argument about Signer and the Landmark Hotel. Yeah, absolutely. His whole platform. Absolutely. absolutely. Majority of his platform was the Landmark Hotel. Absolutely. But we're talking about race baiting here. And Wes, unfortunately, has become a product of it. I was a huge fan of Wes. When I first met Wes... He was just running his hype program, which was the after-school boxing and step yeah. dancing program. Huge impact on these kids' lives, had an enormous impact on their grade point average, and I don't know where that guy went. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, Wes, I don't know where you went. Because I, somewhere along the line, you, know, you, you became a fan of yourself or something happened. I, I'm not there all the time, but somewhere in between when I first met you and you were doing that, to now, you've become a, a uh, a politician. Uh, who, who, right. He's yes. a politician, Joe, who, Wait, and, and, who, who wants to build a political career. And let's sit, he's, circle. He's you, ambitious. Oh, but what's, what was one of those 
credit card expenditures. What I mean, the, the two thousand five hundred dollar the speech that he gave is no, that no, where you're no, going no, with no, that? No, 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 because that was he was paid for that yeah. speech. It was the trip to Washington D.C. to meet the Congressional Black Caucus. Right. He's not a congressman unless he's going to run for one. Is, is that his plan well, in no, 2020 I mean, to run against Denver Riggleman? I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Of course. Maybe they're saying. But you see, that's the thing. You see, building a career. I get it. Hey, we've all done it. Right. You know. You. But. But what you're doing is you're pitting us against each other for political gain. And what I find First personal brand, you're saying. Is people are catching on to it. And that's where you see the low turnout amongst the black community for the Democratic Party caucus because they, they're not believing Wes anymore. You talk and about the low turnout at the Democratic Party caucus. Um, the, from the black community. From the black community. I understand that. Um, we have three positions that are up for renewal on council. We have a very big Four election. Terms. A very big election around the corner yes. for the city of Charlottesville. Listen to me, Charlottesville, Virginia. There are three councilors that are up for re-election. There are three We don't know if they're going to run themselves, right. but those seats I, are I up. doubt Mike Signer runs again. I don't know. I, I don't doubt. Know. Okay. Yeah, uh, three spots. You need to get involved in this election. This will determine the next four years of Charlottesville, Virginia here. And, and understand, you know, that you, you listen to the counselors talk about how low pay it is, how many long hours it is. They, they, listen, that's, that is a That's fiction. legitimate. That's uh, not no, fiction. No, I don't think Joe, it is. Okay. I think let's let's go back and forth they, on this. They're, they're making it that way. Okay, okay. Let they're me, making it We're going to thank Lauren Linsky, Jason Borman, William Cooper, and Billy Koenig. I'm sorry I messed up your name there, Billy, for joining us on the program. We'll play Devil's Advocate with Joe Thomas here for the sake of good radio. Okay. Okay. Great movie, by the way. Keanu how, Reeves. How? It, that's <laughs> Devil's Advocate. Oh, yeah. I did say that. I did say that. Thank you. How Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino in that one. Yeah, yeah that was right. a good movie. How, how can we do 50 hours of work for four straight years and make $18,000 and expect to do the job? Then what's the city? And expect to do the job well, Then what's Joe? the city staff there for? The city, the, the clerk of council is, is, is a support system for council. See, that's just one part of city staff. City staff is a massive staff. What, you know, all right, let's, let's talk about how the city of Charlottesville is constituted. Our charter is strong city manager, city council advisory panel. City council is supposed to be advice and consent for the, the needs of the city. They've turned it into a political platform. The city councilors are supposed to talk to the city staff, say, the staff is supposed to say, here's what we need to do. City council says, hmm, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And, and what they've done is they've constructed this U.S. House of Representatives style. I'm a person, I'm representing the people. It's such a dog and pony show that doesn't need to be there. You're saying and it's smoke and mirrors. You're saying yeah, it's absolutely. all about, it's absolutely. pomp, it's pomp and circumstance it's, and not it's, reality. It's, it's, it's oh, oh, pitiful me. Don't let them scare you off of running for city council. This is four-year terms. All right, I'm going to counter care. Joe here. I'm going to counter Joe here. Think about this. Guys, do you want this job? You are going to make below minimum wage. As you're a part-time side job. This is your side hustle. You, you're going to make below minimum wage. Half the people in your hometown are going to hate your guts. You may or may not have death threats. Okay, you your don't boss, have to, none of those have to happen. Your boss at your work may have beef with what you're saying on Monday nights once a month in front of constituents because of your political ideology. Your then wife, you need a different boss. Your wife or your husband are going to give you shit for not being at home. Mike Signer is mi missing planning commission meetings because he has twin boys, and he's straight up saying, I cannot go to these meetings because I have twin boys. I have to be there for my kids. Your, your significant other will give you shit for you not being home. Who in God's name, Joe, wants this job? Why would I take a job where I'm going to make 18 grand, I'm going to work 50 hours a week, I'm going to have half of Charlottesville hitting my guts, I, I could get death threats. <laughs> and, and, I'm glad and, you don't want and, to. And my credit card <laughs> usage for reimbursements that I think are fair are going to be criticized by people like Jerry and Joe. Well, first off, uh, uh, up until the Mike Signer blow up after August 12th of 2017, I don't think the other city councilors had credit cards That's before true. then. It was just the mayor. That's true. But, and I'm not sure if it was one led to the other, but it seemed to be right after Mike Signer had to apologize for being Mr. on TV. But it's also is, odd that his a, was 5000 and everybody else's it was is 20 a, It is a part-time job. And I've talked, and we're going to circle this, because yeah. this is going to sound like I'm making your point, but I'm not. I talked to a city councilor years ago. She's a wonderful lady. Uh, used to complain about city staff treating 
the city councilors like a necessary evil. Right. Like so, the the uh, the the city planning commission or the city housing authority would come in. They would know for weeks and weeks and weeks. They were supposed to make a big presentation to city council in order to get some budget funding for something they wanted to do, and the councilor in question would just say a simple question based on what the presentation was. And they'd fumble their papers and they'd say, uh, I'll have to come back to you in two weeks. And she just wanted to hit them with a stick because it's like you knew this presentation was coming, just give us the answers so we can rubber stamp or you say yes or no to the projects you're doing. That's the way we're constituted. Now you want to change the construct of the city council or the city management and go to a strong mayor who is in charge like of the Like in executive. Richmond, Virginia. Where the, the mayor is in charge the mayor of the, calls executive, the, shots. Yeah. It, it, the executive branch, that's fine, but then that job becomes straight up full time job. It, you're supposed to staff up, you are truly the executive branch, and then the counselors are still a part time advice and consent representatives of the people. I still don't think they represent the people because uh, uh, Paul Long made a great plea to uh, five wards, two at large city counselors because I, don't I like think, that idea. And Do he's you like right. that idea? I don't see how one person can represent 43,000 separate people. Exactly. You, you break it up and you say, and, and it's the same problem we're having with gerrymandering, not right, gerrymandering, right, right, right. but gerrymandering, uh, <laughs> where it's actually undermandering. We can get into that. But that's a whole other topic. Joe Thomas has got jokes, is, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, but, but the point is, if the city councilors are telling you their job is too hard, it's because they've decided to make it too hard. They're doing things. Wes, at Monday's city council meeting, Wes said, and I'll paraphrase because I don't want him saying, no, that's not exactly what I said. Um, but Wes, Wes complained about, oh, I had to spend uh, from 8 in the morning till 10.30 at the morning at a, uh, at a competing coffee shop listening to constituents, talking, holding meetings with constituents. Well, that's your choice. That's not what, you know, that's not for me as a citizen of Charlottesville but to Joe, say you have saying, to do that. Joe, he's saying he has to do that so he can do his job Why? better. Why? He, he, you have to talk to the constituents to understand what the constituents want. We rep council represents the constituents. You can't be a city councilman in a closet and not listen to people. Sure you can't you can. do it in a silo. But, but but why is it other city councilors in years gone by have been able to run their own chiropractic business? Uh, or You're talking about what, Doug Cox? No, I'm talking about Dave Brown. Okay, Dave Brown. That's right, Dave Brown. Right. Dave Brown, that's right. You the know, mayor. That's right. So, but yeah, he was councilor before that. Yeah. Or 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 David uh, Toscano, who, who was councilor, then mayor, and, and ran a law firm You're going to disagree with this point, and I know you will. I, I, I truly believe we're in a different climate now. With, with, with Self-created. Self, no, that's that's Munchausen syndrome. They've, they've created the illness, and they want us to feel bad for them. Because of the advent and the ubiquitous nature of social media, you have stories and news topics and, and, and problems and issues that are front and center that council and mayors and politicians did not have to deal with 15 or 20 years ago. Well, why, Th that's why, is that, why they're working harder. Why is that not uh, uh, also an answer to the question? Why can you not meet your constituents, do a couple yeah, of emails, yeah. and say, That's hey, good thing. I say, uh, I'm holding a Facebook Live session. Right. Why do you, you know, need to go to Atlanta to learn about a municipality to bring that knowledge back when you can just hop on FaceTime or Skype and get that knowledge right there without using the credit card? I, that's, that's a fair point. And, and the issues are here in Charlottesville. There are people who are begging to be listened to in Charlottesville. And I'm not talking about me personally. Right, right, right. I've got my own mean. platform. Yeah. That's why somebody said, well, why don't you go to city council? I said, I get four hours every morning. People yeah. who want to know what I'm thinking, they know what I'm thinking about it. Uh, I want to leave this to the folks. What I thought was interesting on this subject, Jerry, mm -hmm. zero comments about it at city council meeting Monday night. The credit card usage? Yeah, really? zero. Zero not cons? Not a single person you know got what? up there and said, what up with this? Okay, you know why? That tells me that it's a non-issue. That well, tells me that people understand. We'll see. We will see. We, we will see. see. Let me throw but this the bigger topic issue to you. is still public housing reservations. Of course. Still the feeling of that there is a systemic poverty issue that's not being addressed because you mentioned racism before. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't think it's a race problem. I think it's a poverty problem that's been wrapped in race to make it seem like somebody is doing it to you. And and the people who have done it to you are the ones who uh, raised the business taxes, what, 150% a couple of years ago, and then had this mysterious budget surplus immediately after it. That's the stuff we're talking about. We're talking about confiscatory meals taxes, confiscatory property taxes that 
don't seem to show up anywhere, don't she seem to lead to anything. Oliver Kuttner, one of the biggest supporters of democratic process, uh, the Democratic Party. Yeah, it was like, nothing to do with Charlottesville. And he's, he's like, let me go it. to Lynchburg. Look at what he did yeah. to the Ixard Party. Right, right, I mean, right. he took. Well, that's his dad, Ludwig. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Ludwig Kuttner. I'm sorry. I yeah. picked I picked the wrong yeah. Kuttner. Oliver is the the car guy. Yeah. Um, but uh, Ludwig, he he was a huge supporter of the Democratic Party, and then they stick it to him with a huge. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not a tax increase. It's an assessment. Read my lips. No new taxes. Well, I had I had go. issue with that. Okay, what he's basically saying is Ludwig Kuttner and Alan Kajin at the X Art Park had their tax assessments go up like three or four hundred percent, and I don't know the exact number. But the but average it? in the city was almost a doubling of tax rates. Right, right. It was an astronomical amount of money, and why they were doing that is they they basically took the land on what it could be as opposed to what it is in its current state. And Ludwig basically told me, he said, these folks are pushing and encouraging me to say hell no to this fabulous XR park and these events and to build apartments because I can't pay my taxes with this current setup. And you know what? I feel for Ludwig there. But, but there's jobs there. There's, there's jobs. Sure, there, they may be retail or, or restaurant or anything else, but there's companies that people are making money for their families in these jobs. Sure, would it be great if the X family still was, you know, making textiles there and you had all those great, all the jobs that paid for those folks to have those workmen's houses along the, that area? Sure, but they're gone now. Again, tax policy, regulatory policy, all of this drives these jobs out. We've got an economy right now, whether you like the president or not, whether you voted for him or not, that's growing at four plus percent all around the state, except in Charlottesville. And it's, you know, whether you, I don't know what you're resisting, maybe you're resisting the job growth, but people in Charlottesville need more opportunities. What do you say to the folks that make this comment? Jerry and Joe. Um, and thank you to James Watson for joining the program, Josephine Humphrey for joining the program, David Caron, thank you for joining us here on the program on the I Love Seville show. What do you say to the folks when city council has paid $18,000 and $20,000 for this job? It only allows a certain demographic to run for this position. It allows folks that are retired, that have time on their hands, or entrepreneurs that make their own schedule that can get involved with council. Nakia Walker is a that's clerk, the counterpoint. A clerk at a pool. Right, and West Bellamy was a teacher. Right. Yeah, so that's the counterpoint to that. The people that say you have to raise the salary of council to get a more robust candidate or no, a that's, more, no, that's that, I don't, you don't buy that either, no, huh? I don't buy that either. I think, I think you need to make You heard it that clear. argument though, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You always hear that argument. Yeah. That's, it, but again, it is a false flag. It is saying that, oh, oh, pitiful me, look at how hard our job is. You've made it hard. It's a, I, I, I used the Munchausen's comment before. You've made it harder than it needs to be for yourself then. You, there are plenty of ways that plenty of level-headed people can uh, be at these meetings, go to these uh, events. You can organize planning commission meetings. And I understand you, know, you mentioned Mike Singer can't go to planning commission you meetings. You read that story. Well, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, somebody might, watching might say, well, why does he got to go to a planning commission meeting? He's not on the planning commission. You have to have a quorum of city councilors overseeing the, the, the planning commission meeting. So you need to have, I think, at least three city councilors Plus it just there. looks bad if he doesn't show up. Well, but, but then work out better amongst the city councilors who's going to this meeting, who isn't going to this meeting, who's going to this meeting, who's not going to that meeting, uh, and work it out. This, this is not rocket science. And when you talk about technology changing uh, things, what about what you and I do? I mean, when I started in radio, I was it. I would, all I had to worry about was competing with other radio stations. Now I've got to compete with Twitter feeds and Facebook feeds and <laughs> blog posts and, and incorporate them all and podcasts and all these things, you know, that, that have increased it. I'm not saying, oh, more fiddle. No, me. you adapt. You, you have yeah. to. You, and, and but you know why? Because you're a winner. But po politics, government, representation is supposed to be about service. There's a reason people make more money as private security guards than they do as police officers. You're a community servant. Now, you want to talk about a bigger problem, bigger salary problem. Is the city manager making 180000 in total package over two hundred k? Because my, my problem with that... But, but, but now he's a full-time job. But he's, he's an 80-hour-a-week job. Okay, this is really important for you, Charlottesville, Virginia, to understand what we're talking about. The city manager, and we're actively searching. recruiting and searching for a city manager. The previous one was an NBC 29 sports broadcaster at one time. Absolutely. I thought he did a great job. Yeah, I thought right. he did a great job. This dude 
who is now the city manager in Chapel Hill. $180,000 compensation package. The total compensation when you factored in benefits, everything else, put him over 200K. He had his MBA paid for. Mm -hmm. He had a loan, a 0% interest loan. So he could so buy he a could house put in the 20% no. down in the city of Charlottesville because he was living in Almore County. He mm -hmm. got a 0% loan. Which they forgave when they fired him. Right, which is freaking ridiculous. I well, don't want to get into that. That's, hush, a topic. that's hush money. That's hush money right there. Yeah, that's that's absolutely that's hush that's money. The same thing Al Thomas got was hush money because he knows what happened on right. August 12th. Right, and they don't um, want to expose him. And they right. know if they're going to keep this money, they're, they're going to come calling for that money if they bring them up. Here, but I'm here's going with this. That's okay. where I'm going with this. If the city manager is making two hundred thousand plus dollars, that creates a trickle down effect for every other city position, every other high level city position, because we cannot have a huge gap between the city manager making two hundred plus thousand and then the city attorney making say seventy five, eighty, ninety. That that guy has to go up. So when the number one guy on Charlottesville's payroll makes such high money, that has a trickle-up effect for everybody else on the payroll. But and I think that's the biggest issue right there. But the guy who's producing this television, or whatever you call it, yeah. you know, show. web stream, show, yeah. this show, uh, you know, it, you know, there's a, a value to your work. Uh -huh. So if the city of Charlottesville, and again, these are elected representatives, they're the ones who are determining you have to pay this amount for this job. I think that's where you get some of this blowback from the city councilors saying, well, hold on a second here. Why is the city manager getting all this money and we're the elected officials? We, uh, we were important. Uh, and, and I think that's why you're seeing a little pushback on this. I think the salary is too high for the city manager. It's ridiculous. It's, I think it's way over the top. Right. Uh, and I think there are way qualified people here. Here's the bigger problem. You've got a, a city school superintendent that makes a quarter of a million dollars Okay, and teachers who are struggling, who have to live in Waynesboro to drive in. Now, it's always controversial. I bring up teachers because a lot of people like to be mad at teachers the same way they like to be mad at police officers. They're the front lines. They're the guys who are there to get the rocks thrown at them. But we're asking a city a school teacher to start at 45, 44. You can't, you, you, you've got to go find a place in Louisa or Waynesboro to live on that. Or if you're lucky, be the trailing spouse of a UVA professor. But if you're just a, somebody out of uh, school, you, you've gone to the Curry School and you're like, you know what, I like Charlottesville. I want to teach in Charlottesville schools. We're paying all this up here. If, if you were running a business and you said uh, the, the product is here and you're the most important person because your job is to make the product and I'm going to pay, and believe me, the folks on the left love to tell me about, oh, this CEO made $14 million last year. Well, the CEO of the Charlottesville School Division makes a quarter of a million dollars a year while teachers are living in Waynesboro and having to drive in uh, for their problem. That's that's unequal resource management. I'm not saying Rosa Atkins is a bad person. I'm just saying you're allocating all this money to it's somebody that, that never opens a classroom door. It's like a pro sports team that has to sign a star quarterback and they allocate the majority of the salary cap to Aaron Rodgers. And as a result, the rest of the roster is depleted from talent because New all the money is going to Aaron Rodgers. New huge sports yeah. talk so history would come back out, That's a perfect Jerry. example. James Watson <laughs> makes a good point here. He's listening to us. James Watson, thank you for your, your intellect and your knowledge. He says, um, I'm actually on the side that says it's unrealistic for a lot of people to commit themselves to a $20,000 job that requires so much time. I think the cost of living is too high to take many people to take uh, this job with small children. Basically what I'm saying, he's basically... Yeah, but, but you're saying you're, you're ex accepting their premise as to how many hours it takes to do this job. Joe, it doesn't do... take that many hours to do this so job. So if Joe Thomas was in city council, you think he could do it in 10 hours a week? I've, I've never talked to Dave or any of the folks, Kevin Lynch, who have done it before, uh, but I think, you know, 20-hour a week is reasonable. Let me throw this. I mean, one. secondly, I don't think, you know, 2 a.m. meetings on a Monday night are, you know, representative government either. Yeah, why I mean, is that taking so long? I mean, like, I follow the news reporters mm -hmm. that are covering the meetings, <laughs> and these guys are literally saying, the guy from Charlottesville tomorrow, I forget his name, he's a fantastic guy. He's literally, the guy who replaced Sean Tufts, he's literally mm -hmm. saying Josh. on his Twitter, Twitter feed, yeah, Josh, he's saying on his Twitter feed, am I going to be able to see my wife tonight before mm -hmm. she nope. goes to bed? And then he says later, I think the only place I can get food is the 24-hour Kroger now. That's because yeah. he's there grinding. But but the, yeah, again, it's it's how you do business. Is if you want to meet once a week, that's what's going to happen. I'm I'm fine with meeting every week for 
a, a limited four-hour meeting. Why not? Why can't you do that? Why does it have to be every other week? Why do we wander in this wilderness? You've created this fiction that it's a 50-hour-a-week job. It's not. And the things that I think some of the city councilors are claiming are part of the job are things they've chosen to do with the job. Now, is me doing this here with you part of my job at WCHV no, Radio? No, but it builds your no. brand. Well, but you asked me to come on. I said, sure. No. I, just, I like you. You're a good you man. Yeah. And, and, and I love me some me. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like you too, Joe. Howie, Howie Long, I'm sorry. I stole your line. <laughs> uh, but, but I can't sit there and tell my boss, Vinny, oh, Vinny, I'm sorry. I couldn't get my project done. I spent two hours downtown right. with Jerry Miller right. because this isn't part of my job. Right. But what the city councilors are saying is me doing this is all of a sudden I should be able to claim this as billable hours, and it's not. And, and we've got to stop enabling this. We've got to start getting people who want to be representatives of the people, understand that they come from the communities that they represent, and stop looking like this is some building block job uh, to some grander thing. We, we, we only pay a member of the U.S. House of Representatives at like 150 grand a year, uh, and most of these guys, Eric Cantor makes, what, a seven-figure salary now that he's a K Street lobbyist. Why would somebody want to be a member of the U.S. House of Representatives if he can make six figures more after a couple of years? Tom Perriello makes a ton of a money, at, money uh, at, uh, at the uh, Center for Progress. Right, so, right, right. You know, it, it, it's not what you're paid to do. Jefferson was bankrupt when he left public service. I mean, that's why the Levy family wound up with Monticello, because he was. it was an auction. we got to get rid of this. We need to raise money. Two comments from viewers. James makes the point here, and, and I think James and I will respectfully disagree with your take, and then we'll move on. That's what makes life so great. And cool. James says, and James, good point, James Watson, um, basically anybody with a young family is at a disadvantage if they consider what it takes to be a city council person. I, I'm in agreement with him. I'm, I'm a young father right now. David Caron's jumping in. He said, when I met with Mike Signer when he was the mayor last year, Mike only had a four-hour window every week where he met with people, and I don't even think he filled that four hours up. So that goes to the point that you're making here. It's how you organize Right, it's yourself. how you organize. I understand that. But I also yeah. see it from Walker and Bellamy's standpoint because they want to do the best possible. And for them, doing the best possible is talking to people. Next topic, though, because I have a lot I want to talk to you about. Redskins. Um, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Anne Ann Malik. Okay. Almoral County Board of Supervisors. Okay. Calls a very clandestine press conference mm -hmm. at um, Court Square a couple mm -hmm. days ago. So clandestine that I don't I didn't know about it. I don't know if you knew about it. I uh, knew the, about it at nine o'clock in right. the morning. The notification was day of. Yeah. Right. Day Nothing of. in advance. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about a news topic in keeping the courts in, in Charlottesville or moving them to Almoral County mm -hmm. at a place like Almoral Square, a shopping center that is ghost town, run down, yep. needs yep. TLC. Yep. I'll start open netting. Courts stay downtown. Yes. Your thoughts? Yes, should. You like it? I should. like it too. Should, because again, you talk about a, a, a buried taxation. Uh, if somebody is looking for their constitutional right for defense, uh, there there's costs involved in going back and forth between the county and the city. I think Charlottesville's a county seat. Courts need to be in the county seat, bottom line. Uh, they needed to come up with a way uh, I think what Albemarle County should have done, if they were going to go this way, is they should have pushed harder at, okay, we'll stay downtown if you renegotiate the revenue sharing agreement. Don't even start me on the revenue sharing agreement, unless you want to. I mean, we got all afternoon. But they didn't. They sort of just said, yeah, we're thinking of moving. And then the parking was arranged. Ironically, a parking plan that was promoted by uh, uh, the, the Charlottesville Parking Authority 20 years ago to keep NGIC in downtown is exactly what we've done to keep the courts right. downtown. Right. Um, so, you know, apples and oranges, I get it, but... Randolph, it Supervisor Randolph thinks city council is not going to live up to his promise when it comes to parking. Super, Supervisor Randolph said um, city council in Charlottesville has a long history of screwing Almoral County and making empty promises to Almoral County. That's what Super Bowl, Super, Supervisor Randolph said. He thinks that this parking situation is, is going to become an issue, and that's why he voted against this. Well, He also there's wants a, there's it in Almoral County, too. Yeah. Th there's a couple of points to this. Number one, they're talking about building a parking garage. You're going to know pretty soon if they're reneging on it. Right. 
Um, secondly, Charlottesville went through a very Shakespearean epic to get the Charlottesville Parking Center out of the parking business in Charlottesville. And we could go into the blood sport of that and, and all the players and who hated who and, you know, I just, but they got them out so that they and their linear company run the parking in Charlottesville. So they had that control. So they had that bargaining chip. Uh, I'm, I, I'm no fan of the city of Charlottesville uh, in many things, but in this case, the courts needed to be downtown. They needed to arrange for better ways for parking. It was a cost issue. The sheriffs were all on board. Uh, all the attorneys the wanted it. Right. It, it, and then it hits a poor person harder because now you're talking about paying more. You know, as one of my friends who was an attorney said, so I don't care. I'm going to bill you for the drive up to Albemarle Square if I have to defend you up there anyway. Right. Uh, so you're you're actually adding to a a, a middle income family's costs of legal defense if they try to defend themselves. It was a bad idea. Uh, that some of the nonsense that you know even a, you know Rick Randolph he ought to know better. He was talking. He actually said he wanted it in Scottsville, right, which is absurd. He's from right. Scottsville. He's right. a Scottsville guy. But but he was saying it was an economic development tool. Courts go downtown because that's where downtown is. You don't put the court that's somewhere. Right. And a and perfect example downtown. of that, Rick Randolph, is my hometown, Williamsburg, James City County, moving the courts away from downtown Williamsburg to James City County to the county with the thought that this was going to stimulate the county economy. The reality is it, it's done none of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a little bit more lunch business from the lawyers in between court cases, maybe. Yeah. But Court systems do not stimulate economies. Nobody's court coming in. No one wants to go to court, <laughs> and they're facing a traffic ticket, a felony, or misdemeanor. Honey, well, go Joe, to let's, let's go, go to the downtown grill, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to court here, and I want a martini in a state. I'm in my car, and I'm going home as soon as it's right. Exactly. You and go, and, and you leave. Right. It, and it, it's... It's a downtown function. Downtowns are where courts be, belong because that's where the hub of activity is. You don't make a downtown. Now, does that not... We agree on this. Rick Randolph is absolutely correct that, that, that Albemarle County is only second worst in this area when it comes to economic development. That's because they're up against Charlottesville. Right. Uh, right. So, so that's like saying we're only the mo second most dysfunctional franchise in the NFL after the Dallas Cowboys. Um, so... They have sat there, and I think it was Norman Dill, it may have been Rick Randolph, one of the two newer members of council of the, the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors, said, and I quote, at a meeting where they were discussing hiring an economic development director, what do we need an economic development plan for? We have the University of Virginia here. That's, that is a... Bad business plan from the same reason saying, well, we're Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. What do we need an economic development plan? We've got a steel factory. It does. I'm not and I'm not saying UVA is going to close like Bethlehem Steel right, right, right. nearly did. But if you put all your eggs economically in one basket, this is why we see this stratified economic problem. Again, it's not racist. It's economics. It's, it's there aren't enough jobs. Uh, Albemarle County keeps telling us, oh, we've got a new shopping center going over here. Guess what kind of got jobs go into shopping centers? Minimum wage right, jobs. Right, right. Retail jobs. Look at the chamber uh, jobs numbers. Every year the Chamber of Commerce in Charlottesville puts out their job numbers. Retail is our number one employer after UVA. Uh, and so that's why people are like, I, I've got to work, you know, 20 hours at Old Navy, and I've got to do 20 hours at Burton's, and I've got to do 10 hours at Greenberry's for breakfast, or whatever it is. I'm trying to give you some more, yeah, Sean. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, right. it, 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 you can't, uh, you can't re rely on the retail marketplace to be your economic driver. Uh, it, it, they talk about mixed-use developments. Fluvanna County's doing this, too. They're, oh, we're going to get a mixed-use development. That's, that's like a pixie stick to a diabetic. It, it's going to help you for a little bit, but it's really actually going to make the problem worse. So what you need to do is you need to find career ladder jobs. The, the tech center. I love you know, what they're doing at the Ice Park. I'm sorry the Ice Park is going. The Joffrey Woodruff guy is, is building a, a, a coding tech center. He's essentially putting the companies that he's investing in, his portfolio of investments, in the Ice Park. But those are jobs that yeah, are going to pay good you jobs, good jobs. high five, right. maybe six-figure jobs. Right. And, and he wants to help K-Tech 
Have you ever have you been out to K Tech and seen the computer lab they yeah. build out there? Uh, and you know, you talk about West doing his We Code Two, uh, which again, you know, we can start with the name alone. But that there is fights over what he's doing downtown. It's a job creator, and it's the kind of jobs people in Charlottesville love. There were people who were upset about um, Willow Tree Apps moving yeah, out to, to a Woolen Mills. derelict uh, textile factory that has been derelict longer than I've been a living human being. It's been empty out there. Interestingly, Mike Signer, city councilman, is the in-house counsel for Willow Tree. So I wonder if he excused himself because of conflict of interest any time the topic came up of one of Charlottesville's largest employers moving to Alma. County. He I actually would, did. I would love to have been a fly. Believe, in the believe room. it or not, he did. Yeah, yeah which so. he, he should have. Yeah. I mean, if not, it was a conflict of interest. Well, Let's and and here's and here's one of the reasons I was talking to Ann Malik at uh -huh. the Willow Tree announcement. See, here's here is an instance where, you know, it, as the city of Charlottesville looks at the revenue sharing agreement and how much money comes from Albemarle County. Well, here was an instance where Willow Tree had grown out of its- Of course, I mean, here. they're in like so, five buildings. So do you do you leave Charlottesville altogether for Roanoke or Lynchburg? Well, they had an office in Charlotte, right. in the Triangle. So, so do you go there, You you, or do you find a place that's got the, the footprint and keep them in at least the economic sphere. Right. I think they grow, they wind up adding more jobs, but that's, the, you need HVAC, you right. need blue collar skilled trades, and we stand in the way of those all the time here municipally. And, and I compared thinking that UVA is the economic answer to almost like a, an indentured servitude, to a mill town. Having UVA as your economic driver is fine as long as there are professors that need us to make sandwiches for them. But as soon as those UVA professors saying, you know what, I'm going to make my own sandwiches, all of a sudden the economy starts coming apart because they're not spending the money in town. We need things besides UVA. We need to do a better job of keeping UVA's high, I mean, we're talking about some of the most esteemed engineering oh, and architectural Top dogs are, in the world. And, yeah. and they're flying away. And that's that's the economic issue. Keep them here. Keep them here. You know, create incubation zones where these guys can take the idea they came up with at uh, at, at uh, some kegger somewhere where they're like, hey, this would be a great idea. Yeah, let's do that. Get incubation places where they can start those companies. Start hiring them. There was an instance six or seven years. Well, uh, timestamp. Tom Periello was the congressman at the time. So it's a little bit more than six years ago. He got a big grant to do battery technology. Batteries, a huge issue. As we go to more and more electric things, we need better batteries. So he got this uh, federal funding for research into creating better batteries, okay? The grant went half to Lynchburg to build the batteries and half to Charlottesville to find the research to make the batteries. And I said to him, I said, Tom, can't we build the batteries here? Aren't there people in Charlottesville that can build batteries? Answer? He said, well, we really didn't have the place to build the batteries here. They had it in Lynchburg. We have pad ready. Talk to um, uh, Brad Sheffield, former Albemarle supervisor. Oh, yeah. Talk about Rio pad, district. Pad, dis pad ready economic development drivers. You know, That's where, not where gonna be, that will not happen in the city. We don't it have, should. We don't have the land. But we, we don't have, have the space. Yes, you do. There's Where? plenty. There, there's place for housing. There's places all through the city that you could be doing that this. That can happen there's, in Almar County. And, and, and they're swapping commercial property for housing right. now as we speak. Right, right. So, uh, it, it's, you know, take that and find people who are going to put jobs on those pads. They're already ready for it. Develop them for it. Get, get the venture capital. This is a great city. Uh, and we, we need to lead the renaissance for it by saying, bring companies here. Willow Tree. Look at Willow Tree. It's one of the uh, tech, is it Tech 500? Yeah. yeah. One of the best in the world. It, it's, a, it's a growing company. We should be building off of their coattails and say, look, look at these companies that are here. Come join them here. There's a reason they're here. UVA is like a river of, of intellectual power. So you want the businesses next to the river. 
keep the people here. It was sort of, from what I understand, it was already built when I got here, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. the, the Fontaine and the North Research Parks were for, were to be incubation zones. Where is that happening? I just heard a story on Saturday. General Electric, who, by the way, Charlotte Humphreys, another Albemarle supervisor, once said to GE, Maybe Albemarle County's not right for yeah, GE. That's ridiculous. Oh Another one that God. really, the one but, that really pissed me off, and, and, and you but, know, but GE, nothing. Like, I understand that yeah. GE is two hundred and three billion dollars right. in debt. Right. So how long can we count on GE being an employer out there? Right. Right. Or when, or when the board of supervisors said, "Let's not welcome Deschutes Brewery and the hundred and three jobs that they're going to create to Albemarle County," and then allow them to go to Roanoke. Now, though, the Deschutes Brewery is choosing to hold off on opening its East Coast operation. Yeah. So maybe that worked out well. We close on this note. Joe Thomas, our guest, guys. We're done already? We've been gone, <laughs> we've gone uh, 62 minutes. Wow. It seems like six minutes, right? Well, You're yeah, really, 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 really good at your job. Yeah, we got we, There's tons of stuff. We haven't so even peeled we, Can we do this Green more County? often? Yeah, sure. Whatever okay. you want. I, I, you're, you're great. You yeah, made us look better. Awesome, man. This is how I want to close. This is how I want to close. I ask the same question to everybody. Okay. How long have you been in Charlottesville? 11 years now. He's been in Charlottesville 11 years. Joe Thomas, when you first got here 11 years ago, in today, which is December 5th, 2018, is Charlottesville, Virginia a better place? I rarely see you almost speechless. You always have the words. I think the people are just as good as they were. We've been turned on each other. And we can get back to it as we... Before 2017, we were a way better place than we were when I got here in 2007. 2017, we allowed people from other places to come in here, and now, I said this August 13th, real short story. August 13th, I go on the air, it's Monday morning, 2017. The whole place, I mean, I still s had burning in my eyes from the pepper spray and the tear gas. I was live. He was on the front from, lines. From yeah. it. And I said, the only way we stop from being turned against each other is by knowing each other. When you're online at Greenberries, say hi to the person behind you. Even if you don't know them, just say, hey, good morning. Say, you know, e even if you want to say Merry Christmas and you say Happy Holidays instead, instead just to get the conversation going, say hello to your neighbor when you're walking past them and they're walking their dog. It's the only way we don't get turned against each other because people want us doing this to each other. For their personal gain? Well, just for their because, brand, for their career. Yeah, because otherwise we're all looking at the same things. We, we realize that we don't need them because we have each other. And I'm not meaning in sort of this weird collectivist way. I'm just saying that, it, hey, I take care of mine, you take care of yours, uh, I'll cut my grass, you cut your grass. One of my neighbors is a uh, ranking official with the Democratic Party. She teased me about, uh, she saw a Tom Garrett sign on my yard a couple of years ago, and I, she had a Jane Dittmar sign on her yard. And I said, uh, and she said, where's your Trump sign? I said, oh, I have one. I'm waiting for your Hillary sign to go up. And she said, don't, do, don't go there. But you, know, you have fun with each other. It's not, it's, right. not, it's not, everything isn't a wrestling match. This isn't WWE, I'm gonna get you, brother. You know, You're basically you know, saying. We are all a community and we've been told that we're against each other. You're basically and we're saying not. it's okay if we disagree with each other. We can coexist if we all live by the golden rule. Well, and we just understand that you know, being a neighbor doesn't mean you have to live the same way I do. You know, I take care of my family my way, I go to public schools, you go to private schools. It doesn't make a difference how, how we raise our family. It's just that we're good to each other. We don't have to make my bones off of what I force you to do. And that's what I feel like we're, we have this itching powder of I have to make you agree with me. No, I don't. I don't have to make you agree with me. It's not going to change my day if right. I make you agree. With it. Right. Maybe that's the fruit of growing up in New York City, where you know live and let live was what you had to do. Um, but you know we all got along, and it was millions and millions more people than we have in Charlottesville. Very well said. He's Joe Thomas, guys. WCHV Morning Show host. He's the uh, program director. I think one of the the guys that's really on the news pulse here in Charlottesville, in Central Virginia. He made us look better. 
Um, I want to thank Ray Jordan, Jason Krigler, Chris Jensen, Mark Lickman, James Watson, Tyler Payne for joining us on the show. Hopefully Good we can have, have you. you back. Absolutely, anytime. Don't forget, WCHB has a smartphone app. You can download it so you can listen anytime. We're on 5 a.m. till 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. I would encourage you guys to follow Joe on social because one of the things he really does that I enjoy is the Facebook live stream. It's kind of a behind-the-scenes <laughs> perspective. It's my walk He talk. often does it from his desk as he's walking to the studio. If you ever wondered what it would look like if J.J. Abrams was the cameraman <laughs> for the West Wing, that's what it that's looks like. That's what it looks like there's right all there. these lights in the background <laughs> and flashing and everything else. But it's, it's fun. I just want to let people know what's going on. And we post podcasts and there's all kinds of things going on. Jerry, you're a hero. Uh, you've done so much. Uh, with the, and and please you know follow I love Seville because one of the reasons I get so passionate about this and I've told Jerry this in the past people ask me about it all the time Charlottesville is the second greatest city in the history of mankind there are more human beings living in freedom on this planet today because of a couple of guys from Charlottesville let's live up to their legacy let's not get turned on each other because we think one thing or another just realize that we the people and we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal whether they were able to legislatively get there or not you know we're there now so let's live that way and realize that charlottesville means more to this planet than any place except galilee love that i love that that's a that's a sizzle reel waiting to happen there can i Judah. get a t-shirt that's a way. sizzle reel we can do that <laughs> joe thomas on fire guys i'm jerry miller he's joe thomas we'll see you tomorrow with Lloyd Snook, the one-time chair of the Democratic um, Party here in Charlottesville. Good guy. On Friday, we have April Dent Ward to talk about gentrification and the revitalization of the Fife Bill and Cherry Avenue Quarter and what's happening there. Charlottesville, it's been a pleasure to connect with you as always. Please be good to each other, Charlottesville. We'll see you tomorrow. So good for you, Joe. So thank you. That was so fun. Thanks for all the fish. Yeah, so fun. Can we have you back on? Yeah, anytime you want. Just shoot me an email, shoot oh, well, me a text. text you know, me. yeah. Text all of mine. You're a good man, Joe. Thank no, you for fun. your time. We'll yeah. share. I'm happy to help you anyway. Anything you need, cross promotion, anything. Well, now, I'm going to tag all your pages. You can share it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I can share the video yeah. and share it with folks. So what I'm going to do is the video is now on my.